Hello, welcome to our next session during this seventh week of our discussions on marketing management part 1. Continuing our journey to understand and uh, realize the principles and practices of market segmentation and market targeting, we will take up today a few uh, quantitative models. The first one as you see on your screen can be developed based on the ideas that we have already discussed in the last few session. Here on the x axis uh, on, the, on, the, on the horizontal, we have business strength of a particular uh, company. Uh, business strength can come from uh, your distribution strength, uh, can come from your uh, financial resources, can come from your uh, brand recognition in a particular market, uh, can come for your uh, relationship with major customer uh, and so on. So, here we have business strength from 100 to 1000, I mean this is just a scale, it does not represent uh, rupees or uh, does not represent people and so on, it is a composite, uh, it is a, it's a, it's a scale to look at the business strength of different uh, companies in the field. It could be 1 to 10, here we have taken 100 to 1000. In the same way on the y axis, uh, we have taken uh, market segment attractiveness, market segment attractiveness. So, obviously, if your business strength is high and the market segment is very attractive, then this is where you will put a lot of emphasis obviously, whereas if your business strength is low, but the market is very attractive, it means that this is some where uh, this is a uh, particular segment or market opportunity where you have to put in lot of new effort. So, this will be where maybe you will be in a protective mode, whereas this will be where you will be in an aggressive mode. Now, how to score this, this market uh, or segment attractiveness etcetera, uh, how, to, how to score, how to arrive at that. So, step number one is that you identify factors. Uh, the far you know it can be uh, many factors typically 5 to 8 and you actually you would use statements like this that given our history objective culture management style success and failure we like to be in market segments that offer now here you have to put those identity factors like that offer uh, stability or that offer rapid growth or that offer higher margin and so on. Then you can put some weights on those different factors because for example, if your company is uh, has uh, pressure on free cash flow then when you are developing or looking at market segments, those market segments which offer uh, better liquidity or that means uh, better payment terms will be more attractive to you because of your financial situation. So, based on your particular company situation, you will have different priorities and accordingly these weights are determined then each market segment uh, then can be rated with respect to the performance on all these uh, different uh, types of features, factors. 
and then you can develop factor scores and then you can develop at market segment attractiveness score by uh, integrating. So, uh, for example, uh, we may find that we have for a certain particular product range a position somewhere here. That means, our business strength is something like 600 and our market segment attractiveness is uh, 600. And then we can actually our strategy will be how we will move from x to y, y to z uh, in two steps. So, which means that we would like to improve our business strength and having improved our business strength, we would like to go to market segment which is more attractive. So, for example, a manufacturer of noodles ready to eat noodles may be now in a very strong position in Southeast Asia and that company can then try to develop its marketing muscle in India, marketing infrastructure in India capabilities and address India where with this ready to eat noodles where the market potential is still quite huge and there is a rapid growth of ready to eat stuff uh, market. So, this is what we mean that after we have determined our position on this chart market segment versus business strength, we can actually de decide that for example, we will hold this position x or we will move from x to y to z or uh, we will sort of exit uh, from somewhere here where the business strength is low and uh, market segment also is not very attractive. Decisions regarding marketing resource allocation can be made uh, when we actually. So, this is the chart I was discussing uh, earlier when I had this. So, the, this particular uh, process can be depicted in a chart like this. So, this chart is like the different factors which determine a particular market uh, segment attractiveness. Those factors we have discussed if you remember uh, in earlier discussion like different kinds of uh, criteria for a good segmentation. Uh, differentiated, identifiable, accessible, size, measure, uh, stable and so on. And then we put them here on this and we can develop new factors like uh, uh, liquidity of the market or uh, terms of payment or um, uh, rate of growth. Sometimes the rate of growth is very important for us. Uh, rather than uh, size, because we may already be a very big player. And so, even a new emerging segment where the rate of growth is very high is important, because that will bring uh, uh, the uh, growth rate uh, enhancement to our financial profile. So, therefore, these factors will have different weights for different uh, companies and for different types of markets. So, uh, then we can do a segment rating that how a particular segment uh, rates. So, that could be geographical segment. So, for example, these can be factors like uh, terms of payment, uh, uh, concentration of customer availability. Uh, distribution infrastructure, um, etcetera, uh, distinctiveness in the customer mind. And then we can give weights here and then we can see how the western region compares with respect to the eastern region and, and accordingly we can have these two types of scores and then those scores can be compared. Okay. 
So, I am going to uh, conclude now um, uh, with a few examples. Uh, one example and this is actually I am introducing a new term here of perceptual map. The perceptual map is, uh, is a, another kind of composite segmentation, uh, where you we take uh, orthogonal properties that determine customers buying choice and create different positions for existing products and identify gaps where we can position our new offering. So, this is a kind of uh, segmentation which is strategy which is a little different from what we have been discussing. So, this is now a uh, instead of treating each factor independently, here we are actually treating two factors together and determining a uh, composite position. So, like you can see here this is for pain relievers. So, pain relievers as usually they have some adverse effect on gastrointestinal tract. So, they create some kind of stomach related problem or digestion problem uh, as a side effect. So, uh, if we want to um, reduce that side effect then unfortunately the pain relief effectiveness may go down. So, you see here we have coated paracetamol a generic uh, 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 chemical composition of many different types of pain relievers. This is high on gentleness because as opposed to aspirin which is kind of very low it has a far more uh, uh, adverse effect. Uh, on uh, gastric function, the paracetamol is much gentler on the stomach, particularly the coated variety. But in terms of effectiveness, it is somewhat uh, its position is middle position. And then I have taken some brands uh, like aspirin is the generic chemical, but there are some brands which are predominantly aspirin based. So, uh, like uh, this private label aspirin you know there is famous Bayer's aspirin in US or Ecosprin in India. Uh, now, these are low on gentleness, but they are kind of better in terms of effectiveness. And then of course, there are other uh, painkillers which are very effective high effective, but uh, low on the gentleness. Now, once you create a map like this and you tabulate all the different players, then you will see for example, perhaps there is a market opportunity here, which is maybe a, a pediat pediatric for a, a kind of a pain reliever for children, which is quite gentle uh, and not that strong. or uh, for uh, various types of casual pains, this can be therefore seen as an um, position as yet vacant. Now, I am not saying that this is actually the reality of the Indian market, this is just a notional presentation that you can take this perceptual map and identify different market segments occupied by different products on this two dimensional map and then identify where you have an entry point, where you can be more distinctive with respect to the existing products. So, as you can see this is a very crowded market or this can be even more crowded market. So, how to identify less crowded markets uh, is, uh, is, is another type of segmentation. So, what we have uh, we have been mainly looking at in this particular session is that the segmentation uh, can be done individual factor wise or it can be done with multiple factors in uh, orthogonal combination and sometimes it can be done at a time with taking multiple factors 
in a multi dimensional uh, manner. I think it is time for us to recap this entire discussion on uh, seg targeting market segment. Uh, we have slightly now changed the positioning as you can see that from usual nomenclature of segmentation targeting positioning, we are now kind of combining that how do you uh, target different market segments. So, for each target market segment, you have to develop an unique offer which is precisely tailored to the need profile of the customers in that segment. This is the first core most important message. So, segments are determined usually by the nature of consumers and by the type of buying behavior they exhibit. So, segmentation is not that you have a product and you are looking for who will be the possible buyer. I mean sometimes it happens, but what we are saying is taking the main spirit of marketing that you understand the customer first and then create a product or service value proposition to match and wow and excite that particular uh, identified segment. But you may at a time identify number of interesting segments, then to decide how you will allocate your marketing resources, we should ask two questions that how attractive is this segment and do we have the strength to win the business strength. That is the uh, uh, 2 by 2 metrics that we discussed a uh, little, little while back. So, two issues are we is this opportunity real, how good is this opportunity and how strong are we to avail of this opportunity with respect to competition. And then you can improve your market position by investing either in expanding your business strength or by addressing adjacent segments or a larger cluster of segments. So, today you are very strong in northern region, you may actually include southern region and create a maybe a different or additive set of uh, features and thereby position your hair oil strongly in southern market and also enjoy your strong position in the northern market. So, uh, that is kind of you understanding segments and then using the segment for growing the business. We will continue to discuss this even with because ultimately we are looking for growth of income growth of profitability and STP or segmentation targeting is a way towards that goal and we will discuss in next week's uh, sessions a lot more about that. Then uh, you can have multiple attractive segments, they can be adjacent or sometimes they can be different and you may be able to address them differently because ultimately you have some manufacturing facility or operations or core competence which allow you to address these different segments. So, you, you identify that you have uh, core competence in making small engines, then you can address all the different types of segments uh, for boats where the small engine is applied and so you have this um, uh, speed boats or fishing boats or ferry boats uh, all using your small engine. That is the, uh, so those segments are uh, not exactly adjacent, they are different types of, they will exhibit different behavior, but have you because you have the competence of small engine, you will be able to develop these uh, different offerings. And at the same time, so that is a segment boat, within that there will be sub segments, but you can then take this small engine and you can apply it to lawn mower. So, then you will have different kinds of 
lawn mower and harvester and other products. Again, another segment coming from the same core competence uh, and addressing another set of segments. So, the point is that a company may address one segment if it is an entrepreneurial company, but must have a plan of expansion which can be within that broader segment by sub segments like a, like today you enter fish a fishing boat and then you go into ferry boat or you you have to have strategy of that okay i'm doing boat but i will have another effort towards uh, lawn mowers so this is the way we use segment as steps towards the heaven or or, or the our goal of uh, winning market position. One of the good techniques we use there is this perceptual map and uh, where we can identify uh, the by uh, taking some orthogonal characteristics uh, both can be important buying criteria and by combination we can find the less crowded uh, positions in the market and that can be then our segmentation strategy uh, basis. So, if we have, uh, if we see that uh, uh, gentle uh, mild painkiller has a less crowded market situation, uh, then we can develop a product which exactly addresses uh, those types of requirements. And, uh, uh, Segmentation is important for uh, very large companies, segmentation is important for entrepreneurial companies. So, segmentation is a core step towards marketing direction, where you start and where you want to go. So, it is kind of a compass for determining your marketing strategy. Thank you.